Okay, guys. So, like I said, I'm going to be making short videos so that you are able to just see the video instead of having to go and do a lot of other things into the, the one from the class so you don't have to. Um, maybe you want just one specific step, and that's why I'm making these short videos, okay? So I'm going to skip the two variable part, and I'm going to go ahead and go straight to when you have more than two variables. So you have here, you have your customers, and you have here maybe a survey that you've done, engagement, um, income, and maybe um, age, okay? You can decide, well, the age doesn't seem like an age. Engagement, um, income, and maybe, for example, satisfaction, okay? So you have three variables, and now the k-means cluster theory says that you need to select three random points and these would be the three random you can choose any you can choose one two three you can choose five nine and fifteen you can choose whichever you want i like since we're going to do three segments i like to be able to um, do it in a way that's going to take a lot less iterations than if i was to just randomly choose one so if i find the minimum the maximum and the mean of one of my variables it's going to be a lot easier for me to place them Okay, so I have my minimum, and I'll put the formula, it's the same in English and Spanish. The max is the same as in English and Spanish. And the mediana is in Spanish or medium, it's the number right in between when you order all the values, okay? So these are my values, 1.13, 4.99, and 3.26. So this is going to be my start one, my start two, and my start three, okay? So these are um, like I saw, we saw in the class, we've named them, start one, start two, start three. And remember that this theorem, that this um, theory goes with the Euclidean theory, which is the sum of squares of the difference. To be able to find the distance between two points, it's going to be the difference in the square, the difference of the distances between the two points squared, okay? So, and here, I'll put it, this is my first, observation with its and can be as many um, variables you can have five six seven variables if you want you can go ahead and put it there and my first centroid and this is my first centroid okay the difference like um, the first point the first step is to find the difference between these which would be this one minus this one okay there it is and then it's the sum of squares and there's a formula which is sum of squares, suma punto cuadrado of this, okay? And that's 10.14, 10.54, sorry, not 14, 54. 10.54. And I could do this for every point if I wanted to. I just click and all my points and be doing that. The truth is, if I have 300 um, observations, it's going to take a lot longer, and it is not feasible to be able to do one point at one point. So there's a formula in Excel that's called SUMA, or sum x m for minus y2. This is sum x minus y square, or two for the square. Our first matrix is going to be this matrix, okay? This is our first data. And we put, make sure you make absolute values on the columns so that you don't have any problem dragging it. And our first data. And if you can see, it already has the name. And it's the same number, 10.54 that we had, 10.54. If I drag it, it's going to have the same number because now I have to make sure that it goes with start two. And this one goes with start three with each of our centroids. Now I can pull it down. 
And now I have all the points from that particular point to all my different centroids. And now what we need to find is which one is the one that has the least, the least distance. And we do that with a mean value, which finds the minimum value of a set of data. This is it. So this is finding the minimum. And if it finds the minimum, it's really telling me that is the one, the one that is closest. And remember we put, if we were closest to start one or to the centroid one, we put one to the centroid two, two, and to the centroid three, three. So now we do a conditional format, if or C, C, if this, if the minimum is equal to whatever is um, the, the distance between that point and centroid one, then it should return a one because then it would be in cluster one. If it's not, if this data is equal to the distance between the cent with the centroid two, it should bring me back the number two. And if this point, if it's this point is equal to that, it should bring me three. And you have two options. You can already put three if you make sure if you know that your formula is correct. If you don't, or if you're scared, you can put six. C. This is equal to the centroid three. Then it would bring me back three. And my false, it can bring me back an error if it is not equal to anything. Okay. That's just the next step, it's just the validation step. And that one, that's already, okay. So my cluster one, I'm going to count how many, how many of my observations are in each cluster, contar, punto si, or count if, our range, and I'll phrase it, is if my criteria is one, if there's a one, it's going to return the number. This is going to be, if this is a two, and if this is a three, and then I sum it. And this number should be equal to the number of observations that I have, which it is 15 and 15. And now what we want to do is the sum of the square errors. And the sum of square errors, there it is, 48.69. And the whole meaning of, of this is to do more iterations to be able to just um, to diminish this number to be the minimum it can be. So now we calculate how many of them are to be able to count to create our new centroid or a revised mean for our centroids. So our initial cluster will be whatever I have here. Okay, and now I'll make sure I have my cluster. So I'll put a, a formula if or see if this number is equal to one because I'm in cluster one, then it should return this value. If it's not, I don't want you to return absolutely anything. Okay? Um, so it didn't return anything. And I should have. I need to make sure that I have that. Okay? So now I can pull this down. And those are all the clusters that are already in one. Now, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this and make sure get this fixed. And this one. So this number right here is equal to two. Pull it. Okay, so it should give you one of that. All my numbers. Now I'll pull it down. And something happened because of Gotta be careful about these. There it is. And then we do the same thing with cluster three. So if that is equal to two, 
and then I'll go ahead and put that. And this one has to be is equal to three. Okay, and there it is. And so it should give you the four. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, which is six, and this should give me five. All right, five. So now we want to find the revised mean. So the revised mean is going to be an average or a promedio of all of them. And there it is. These are my new centroids. Okay, this is going to be my new centroids that we're going to work with. The same thing happens if I have this data. Goes right here. It goes right here. And this is my new centro, my centro for my cluster one. We're going to do it again. So my second iteration, and we're going to do um, to find the distance between the point or the first observation or the point of the first observation to my new centroid. Okay. So make sure it's just the data. The same thing goes. And there it is, and the sum of squares. And it gives me 8.69. And the same thing goes here. Suma x minus y2. My first matrix, it's going to be this particular matrix. Again, Make sure they have some values and this particular matrix. You can also name the ranges and you can see it's 8.89. Now this one I just have to pull here and this one I just have to pull here. So here it is. Those are my new values and I do the same thing. I go ahead and go and say, which is my min value of this, which are these. And the same formula of if this value equals this, then it should return one, and I, I'll put them up here in a minute. If this value equals this, Finish return two, if not a three, I'm not checking for errors anymore. One, two, three. No longer checking for errors, there it is. I'll go ahead and put count if. My range, absolute values to one. This is two, this is three, and if you can see now it's five, five, five in each, before it was four, six, five. So there was movement between one point at least. So I'll sum up the sum of my errors, and as you can tell now it's 1434. There was a significant um, reduction from my first error with this next iteration, which means that I something's doing right. So we'll do it again. The ideal of it, obviously, when you're doing this is to at least have 10 iterations. Um, in this exercise, we're not gonna go with 10, and I'll show you why in just a few minutes. Obviously, there's a faster way to do it. So there we go. This is what we have. This was already, I left my formula up here for some reason, but the formula doesn't seem to be Quite correct. So we'll go ahead and we never added this. So we'll go ahead and say if or sim, if this number equals to one, then I want you to bring back this number 
If not, nothing. And remember, there it is. And if this number, which is going to be C, is equal to two. Is. And if this number is equal to three and it starts in the C4, and there it is. And now I can do again my revised mean, which is promedio of these or average. And these are my new centroids. Okay. So if I compare. They're, they have moved, the centroids have moved. Now we can do, I'm gonna do one more step um, of this. I'm not no longer going to do this because you get the point of what we've been doing. So here is suma x menos y2. My matrix, again, it's this data comma to this data that's my new matrix and you can see the number went down now i move this and now i move this checking to see if that's correct now go ahead and do it i'll find my mean Okay, if this is equal to this, then it should bring back one. If, if this is equal to this, it should bring back a two. This is wrong. This should be a C. If not, bring back a three. Okay. If you can tell it there wasn't much change in that point of scene. This range for one. Okay. There wasn't any change. See there wasn't any change. There's still five, five, five. And my, the, the sum of square errors is 13.21, 20. So if you can tell it did reduce and we could do it again and again, but it's very, very close to what we're going to have. We, we have our three centroids and it's, it, it should stay that way, okay?